In this video, I'm going to show you two different ways that you can calculate duration between two times in Power BI. We're going to go through both of these methods step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan, and welcome to the Solution Subworld YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's start by looking at this simple report that I've created for you today. It's a simple report that only has two tables. One is a timesheet table, which is a list of my employees for every single date and the different times that they've clocked in and clocked out. We also have a table here with the rates, which basically tells me how much they are paid per hour. So we already have a relationship set up here so that we know for each employees in the timesheet, what is their hourly rate. And let's say we have a requirement that we need to calculate how much we need to pay each of these employees based on the number of hours that they've worked. We need to calculate the duration between the start time and the end time, and then multiply it by the hourly rate that we have on the rates table. Now, the simplest and most visual way that you can probably do this is by Power Query. So let's start by doing that method first. So let's go to the Power Query section here by clicking Transform Data. And then from the timesheets here, we have the start date and the end date. We'll simply select the end date. Hold Control, select Start Date. And then we'll go to Add Column here. And then under Time, under Time, we'll hit Subtract. What it does is it calculates the duration between the start date and the end date, and then just gives us the value in an hour or minute format here in this, in this column. Now, if you selected start date and end date, this might be negative. So you can just simply, uh, it will probably be start date and end date here in the formula bar. So you just switch them around, but this should give you the quickest way to get the duration in hours and minutes. The next thing that we need to do is convert this into hours. So we select it and then we go to transform here. And then under duration, we're going to select total hours. And what it does is it basically converts hours that we have into fractions, into decimal fractions. So that way we can then now multiply this into our or using our rates table. So if we just go back one step here, and obviously some of these hours that have been worked on is in fractional hours. So if you want to calculate the fractional hours, you just leave the decimals here. However, if you want to round this up or down, you can simply just use one of these uh, options here. So if we round up, for example, it just rounds them up into the nearest hour. And then from here, we simply just need to get the rates from the hourly rates table. So we'll do a merge. We'll go back to our rates here. We'll merge these using the employee ID like this. We'll expand the table and just grab the hourly rates like this. And then we simply select the subtraction and hourly rates. And then we go to add column and then under standard multiply. So that gives us the amount that we have to pay each of these employees for each of the days that they have worked on. So if you want to group them by employees, which is our original requirement, we can simply use the group by section here. So we'll do um, group by employee name, and then we'll simply sum this multiplication up and then just say uh, earnings. So what it will give you is for each of these employees, how much are have they earned based on the hours that they've worked on. And that's really it for the Power Query version. It's pretty simple. As you can see, it's all just drag and drop without having to write any codes at all, actually. However, you're not always blessed with having access to adding these kind of functions in Power Query. So you might want to create your own calculations in DAX instead. So I'm going to show you a different version using DAX. So we're going to just remove the grouping here, for example, uh, I'm just going to keep, uh, I'm going to remove these columns and then earnings in Power Query. I'm going to keep this value here just so that we can compare it against the calculation that we're going to do in DAX to make sure that we are doing it the same way. So we're going to hit close and apply here. 
And we're going to start by creating in our timesheets a new column like this. So we're going to call this earnings in DAX. And one of the functions that we will use is the date diff function, which I typically use to calculate, you know, how many days there are between two days. But actually the intervals here also work with hours or minutes, I think. So um, we can do that uh, using this function. So we're going to feed it the start date, the end date, and the hour. So as you can see, we have other options here, hour, minute, and even second, actually. Wow, so I didn't even know that. So uh, for now, we're going to choose hour. And there we go. So, so now it simply gives us the difference in hours between these two uh, start dates and end dates. Now, you probably notice something here. And uh, the fact is the earning index, if we multiply this with the uh, the rates that we have. So we're going to use related here and get the hourly rates. You'll see that it doesn't exactly equal to what we got in Power Query. And that's because date difference only gets the whole number of values. And it doesn't take into account the rounding up or down depending on the fractional minutes that has been worked on. So for example, if someone worked for eight eight hours and 45 minutes in Power Query, we run that up, but in this case, it doesn't. So we have to do this rounding if we want to uh, work with or get the same value in Power Query. But if you're only looking for the hours without the minutes, then this is probably more than enough for you. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to split this into a few things. So, so this is what we ended up so far. So this first section simply gets the hours between these two date formats. And then this second section here simply calculates what the um, fractional minutes are after that hour. So if there's uh, 45 minutes, it will be 0.75 to be added into this, this hour. So uh, it's showing us in whole number here because we have actually got this in whole number. But if we put it in decimal like this, okay, let's add decimal values here. So as you can see, it adds the decimal values here uh, calculated for us. So if we want to round that up or down, we can do it the same way as we have in Power Query to be consistent. So what we're going to do is to simply just, we'll just round it up because that's what we did previously. But obviously, if you want to work with and, and multiply the uh, hours worked or the hourly rate based on the fractional values here, you can just leave it like this without rounding it up. But for me, I'm going to round it up before I multiply it to the hourly rate. So we're going to use a related hourly rate like this. And there we go. So removing the decimal points here, the values that we have in DAX should be similar to the calculation that we did in Power Query. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to calculate the duration between two time columns in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.